Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. You can use a small pry bar or you can use a large flat blade screwdriver to pop the wheel cover off. We're going to loosen the axle nut with the wheel on the ground so it doesn't spin on you. First I need to unstake the axle nut so it's been staked in there so it can't come off. And Once we punch that out, we can use the socket to remove the axle nut. Just going to use a small punch and a hammer. That should do the trick. Just going to spray some rust penetrant on here to help it spin. So use a 30 millimeter 12 point socket. And use a long breaker bar. And the reason why I like to loosen the axle nut with the wheel still on and the vehicle on the ground is that these are on here with a lot of torque. You're not going to rock the vehicle off the jack stands and you don't need a second person to step on the brake and to keep that axle from spinning on you while you're trying to remove the nut. Just get it fairly loose. You don't have to take it all the way off, but you want to make sure it's loose enough so that when your vehicle is in the air, you'll be able to get it off without spinning the axle and the brake rotor around. You can use a 21 millimeter socket, a large breaker bar, and loosen the lug nuts of the vehicle on the ground so the wheel doesn't turn. Raise and support your vehicle with the jack and jack stands, but we're going to use our two post lift. The vehicle in the air, lug nuts are loose, I'm going to use the socket to finish taking the wheel and tire off. We'll loosen the 12 millimeter bolt that's holding on the ABS wire and the brake hose to the strut body I'm using a 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Side, unhook it. And use this clip tool to unhook this from the strut body. This is the ABS wire. Just pop it out. Hold that aside. We use a 22 millimeter socket, a long breaker bar. I'm going to turn on the nut here for the two strut bolts. I'm going to loosen both of these up. If the bolt starts to spin, I'll put a 22 millimeter box wrench on either end to counter hold it. We're going to try to loosen it first. Just be careful you don't smash the fender with your breaker bar. And switch to a ratchet to make this go a little quicker. Pull these bolts out. I have to wiggle the knuckle a little bit to make them loose. knuckle out of the strut. Perfect. I'm going to tap on the end of the CV axle with a dead blow. Try to make sure it's free from the hub so I can get it out. Put some rust penetrant in here. So I thought I had this axle not loose enough while the vehicle was on the ground. But trying to remove it, it still wants to spin. So you can take a breaker bar and brace it against the wheel studs. And continue to spin it off. Hit it with a dead blow. There it goes. Pull the, the axle out of the hub out. You can 
So like that. On our vehicle, part of this plastic is missing. Somebody's cut it away so they can get to the oil filter, get the oil drain plug, change the oil easier. So you may have to take this plastic down, but you can see the CV axle goes into the transmission here. So you might want to have a drain pan handy if you leak a little bit of transmission fluid, but there is an opening in the plastic. I'm going to slide the pry bar up into here and catch the edge of it. And then I'm going to tap on it with a hammer to pop the axle out of the transmission. Now we can slide the axle out. Reinstall the axle. We're reusing the old one. It was in good shape. We just want to show you how to take it out. Slide it back into place. Be careful not to damage the CV axle boots. Maneuver it into the transmission. Try not to damage the seal. Be very careful. Might have to spin it a little bit to find the splines. It won't slide right in because it does have a little lock, a circ clip on there. So now we're gonna have to hit it into place. So take a dead blow on this end, tap it into place. All right, that's seated in place. Clean up the spilled transmission fluid. And at the end, top off the transmission, put the axle back into the knuckle. Maneuver it around here, flex it over a little bit, push the knuckle up and guide this into the back and we need to turn it a little bit so it lines up the splines, it will slide in, capture the nut on here. So I'll put the hub and knuckle back up into the strut. Get the bolts lined up. Wiggle this stuff around a little bit. Get the two nuts started for now. Those will all get torqued down afterwards. All right, put the brake line back in place on the bracket. Just kind of slides up behind here. There's key keys that it sits into. that. This bracket goes on top of it. Install the original bolt. Tighten this up. If I feel like it tight, I'll stop. And don't forget to clip this back into the strut, your ABS wire, so it's not hanging loosely. I'm going to snug the axle nut down. Torque it with the wheel on and the vehicle on the ground, but I want to get it down so it's tight enough to put the wheel back on. I counter hold the bolts and use a torque wrench. I torque these the nuts and the strut bolts to 177 foot pounds. Do that for both of them. Once it clicks, you're all set. Reinstall the wheel. Start the lug nuts by hand. These lug nuts do have a shoulder on them. The opening in the wheel is a little bit bigger, so you might have to line it up and just kind of fiddle with the wheel a little bit while you're tightening these down. Gonna use the socket, snug these down. When I'm done, we'll lower the vehicle to the ground and torque them to spec. I'm gonna torque the lead nuts in a cross pattern to 76 foot pounds. I'm 
to torque the axle nut to 159 foot-pounds. Reinstall the wheel cover, line up the hole for the valve stem, and then snap it in place. Remove this undershield that goes underneath the engine and transmission. There is some 10 millimeter bolts here, and then two here. We'll remove those. Use a 10 millimeter socket, a long extension, and my ratchet just so I don't have to reach up here, but you can use any length ratchet. These two bolts were so rusted they broke. There's plenty of plastic clips holding this tray on. I'm not worried about it. These bolts are also very rusty along here. One of them already broke. So what we're gonna do is remove all of the clips and then fold the plastic under tray down to get it out of the way. I'm gonna leave these bolts in place, not touch them. If your vehicle is not rusty, they'll probably come out without a problem. This car is very rusty. They're gonna break on us. I'm not gonna bother with it. I'm just gonna use a flat bladed screwdriver to release these plastic clips. Pop them out. Once you get them started, you can use a trim clip tool. I've just gone along and found all the push clips holding this up. Somebody has already cut this to give them better access to the oil pan and the oil filter. So normally there'd probably be a door here you'd flip down. Ours doesn't have it. I'm not gonna worry about it. There's one more clip here. I'm just gonna take a bungee cord, just hook it to this, and you can hook it to the front grill. It'll just help hold it out of the way. This is your drain. There's a 10 millimeter hex key in it, and your fill is up here just behind the CV axle. This is also where you check the level You'd open up the fill plug and some transmission fluid should just dribble out. That would be the proper fill level. We did have the axles out of this car. We leaked some transmission fluid out. So we want to top off the level. So I'm going to crack this open and I shouldn't have any fluid drip out because it should be low. And then we'll fill it until some fluid dribbles out and then tighten it. And that's the proper level. If you wanted to drain, most of the fluid out, you'd do it from here, and then you'd refill through here until it dribbled out, and then you tighten it up. Just spray just a little bit of rust penetrant on there. You can use a 10 millimeter hex key and a ratchet and a short extension. Get it in place. Break it free. You want to have a drain pan ready, catch any fluid that might leak out. Thread this out of here. There is a gasket on the end there. So I don't have any fluid coming out, so that means it's low. Use a fluid transfer pump of your choice. I'm gonna use a suction gun type. You can use one that goes in the bottle and then pumps out. Just fill this up. All right, so you see it dripping out, so that's filled up. So just reinstall the drain plug. Reinstall the drain plug and just tighten it, not too tight, just so you feel it stop and that should be good. We'll clean it with some brake parts cleaner so we can check for leaks. Reinstall any plastic clips you took down to get the shield off. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.